Welcome back everyone. For today's video, we are going to be playing against the great bot also known as chat GPT. Now we tried to do this before as did many other content creators, but unfortunately at the time, chat GPT was unable to play a complete game of chess without making illegal moves, potentially transforming the position in many different ways. So this time we're back. We've been told that it's possible to play a complete game. So we are going to try and let's see how it goes. All right, so let's go. So first things first, I'm going to write something in the prompt. Uh, hello, want to play a game of chess? Wait for a response. I'm sorry, but as I'm an AI language model, I'm unable to play. I'm not able to play physical games like chess. However, I can certainly help you learn how to play chess. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to say that I'm playing 1e4. Okay, so as you guys can tell, I did pause there a little bit. Um, as we, as you can see, it's try. It, it is actually playing the game. But the way that it's responding is much more in a general tone. Um, so I said I will play one e4. It gives it gives like the popular opening theory. It's turn to respond and it says e5. So now well, I'm going to make the moves on the board. So one e4 e5. I'm going to play two knight to f3. Let's let's keep going. Sorry for that pause. As you guys can tell from the pause, this video of course is not edited. I'm doing it on the fly with no edits involved so after knight f3 let's see what his next move is it says position is now knight f3 knight c6 okay so i am going to play three three d4 i'm going to play pawn to d4 playing the scotch opening here let's see how chat gpt responds it says very aggressive move by playing three d4 you're aiming to break through the center and gain more space so i like the way it's giving general information it's actually very useful it says e takes d4 I'm going to play knight takes knight takes d4 here hopefully understands I said knight d4 as opposed to knight takes d4 um and it did did understand even though I wrote the annotation a little bit wrong um so it's going to play bishop c5 now as most of you know bishop c5 was played in the famous game between xqc uh and moist critical and pod champs one where xqc actually lost in six moves I'm going to play five bishop to e3 in this position let's see how it responds here now as you guys will probably notice I have the bar on but no lines in it is in analysis mode um, I'm not looking at the bar but just for those of you who are watching at home to have some idea of what the evaluation is I do have it on so it plays bishop b6 now this is the first move that is not the main line in the old days queen f6 was played more commonly I have seen bishop b6 but it's been many many years since I last recall seeing somebody play this um nonetheless I'm going to play knight to c3 let's see what its next move is going to be so after knight to c3 it plays it plays uh knight to f6 a pretty solid move here as well now let's see now I think here I do need to think for a second um and I think I'm going to play knight takes c6 because it looks like the correct move so I'm going to take and my idea is that after takes I'm going to play e5 and I think I'm a little bit better here but let's see let's see how it plays out okay by playing seven knight takes c6 you're exchanging your knight for my bishop on b6 um actually I'm exchanging the knight for the knight on c6 so it's a little bit wrong a little bit imprecise uh because I'm trading knights I didn't trade the knight for the bishop but nonetheless it still plays a legal move so it plays d takes c6 legal I should say um now d takes c6 a little bit not the best move I mean I really don't want this to go into a long end game but I'm actually curious to see what the level is so I am going to trade the queens here on d8 um and let's see what it does so I'm gonna trade it's obviously going to take and then I'm gonna play um I will play Bishop takes b6 next move okay so it's giving the current position on the board and so far so good all the moves are very legal so I'm going to play Bishop takes b6 here we're going to trade some bishops now the reason I'm doing this is because I have a pawn majority in the center of four pawns versus three pawns so it feels like I should be a little bit better here but hard to judge exactly what's going on so it's going to play I assume a takes but it it takes with the a pawn so it builds a box of four here my next move is going to be 10. I think I'm going to play 10. I think I'm going to play 10 a3. I don't know if a3 is best or if f3 is better but I can always castle my king out of the center of the board so that's why I do it. So it says in response to 10 a3 I'll castle king side with 10 king e7 this move gets my king to safety but it also will connect the rooks in the long term so good move however it does not castle the king. Now however I am going to play uh I will play 10 
f3 here to consolidate my chain of pawns in the center probably i'm gonna move the king up to the center of the board like e3 at some point and we'll see what it does but the the game so far pretty balanced computer playing very very well so it plays 10 rook to d8 very solid move i am now going to play uh or actually it's generating still so i will wait a second i will now play uh 12 king to e2 and what I'm doing with this move is I'm trying to bring the king up in the center and then finish my development with bishop e2 and rook d1 myself. Position fairly balanced still. Um, white is maybe a little bit better due to these two sets of double pawns and this classic box here. But again, objectively shouldn't be all that special. Let's see what the what, what chat GPT is going to play. And it's going to play... It will play drum roll. I will improve the place of my king with 12 king to f8. Now, I think this is not the best move here. I think the king is a little bit better in the center of the board here if you just develop. I don't really think it's a necessary move, but it does play it. So I am going to play king to e3. Now I have to wait, wait a second, but I'm going to go king e3 here. And the idea is that basically I want to go bishop e2, rook d1. And in the long term, I think with these double pawns and the fact that I have a four pawns versus three in the center, I should be quite a bit better. So I'm going to play king to e3 here. Of course, it takes a second or two while, the, while it generates all the moves. So I'm going to go king to e3. And let's see what chappy t is going to play here. Now, again, very, very dry and kind of boring. But I am also curious about the endgame because one of the weaknesses with chess programs in general prior to the, prior to the massive rise was endgames. They didn't seem to play super well because they didn't have this horizon where they could see deep concepts beyond a couple of moves. So here, like, if I want to go g4, h4, h5, bishop e2, that's already four moves deep. And the computer sometimes has issues with the horizon. So let's see what it's going to play here after king to e3. We are waiting for a move. And it's going to play c5. Now, c5, definitely a mistake here. Actually, you can see from the eval bar, it shot up. The reason c5 is a mistake is because it basically starts to yield some squares in the center of the board. Now, there's knight b5, maybe knight d5, maybe even just bishop c4, frankly, to trade. Um, I think what I'm going to play here, I, I'm actually surprised it says 0.7. Because to me, it feels like white's better. But 0.7 seems a little bit, a little bit much, honestly. But I'm going to play bishop to e2. So I'm going to play bishop to e2. Let's see what it plays now evidently this was not the best move um the computer like something else i'm not quite sure what but let's see what it plays here my goal again is just to trade some rooks in the center of the board and eventually try to put pressure on these pawns or use this pawn majority on the king's side and start pushing p so i played bishop to e2 it's going to play what's it going to play here we're waiting for a move this move allows your king's knight to move to f4 now uh, the 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 rationale as you guys can see from what it's saying it's a little bit shaky a little bit shaky uh the bishop's not bishop kind of stops tight from going to f4 so it's a little bit little little bit a little bit weird but nonetheless um we keep going just a tad weird in response to bishop e2 i'll continue with bishop e6 okay very solid move i am now going to play 15 rook h d1 because again trying to trade some rooks here eventually hoping that pushes some pawns maybe f4 at the right moment still a little bit premature to do it because there is rook d4 and rook d8 and some pressure on the pawn so once i get rid of some rooks i can start to push the king side pawn so i will play rook hd1 here it's going to finish generating the sequence in a second um but rook hd1 looks like a pretty solid move here again eventually i want to go f4 maybe h4 g4 and then even g5 f4 but with all these pawns the four on three on the king side i think long term i should be better also i almost feel like at some point it should try to play c6 b5 and b4 c4 and get these pawns rolling on the queen side so i'm going to play play rook hd1 here now, of course, if I had really thought this all the way through, probably playing an endgame and knowing that it's going to have to type the whole sequence back to me, probably not, not, not great to play an endgame where this game could go another 30, 40 moves, but it is what it is, as we like to say. So after Rook HD1, I think King E7 is the best move here. I don't think it's going to, oh, it does play King E7. Wow, I did not expect that. Okay, now after King E7, I want to start pushing on the King side. Maybe I go F4 right away. Yeah, I think I'm going to play f4 here. So 16, f4. And the point now is there's no rook d4. If he plays like knight g4, I can take, take and play knight d5 with a fork here. And it's really, really scary. So let's see what it's going to play after f4. In this position, it's going to respond with... Let's see what it does here. I think I, I, think I am actually starting to take the advantage here. It plays... Uh, Wait. It says castles? Wait, but that's an illegal move. 16, castles is an illegal move uh i'm probably gonna have to 
Trick it into playing a legal move. I apologize. King is password squares. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Did it just. Uh oh. I'm going to have to try to. It says. It uh, did it finally. Um... Uh, did it finally fall apart where it can't play legal moves? This game was going really well. I was. I, I hope it. Um... I, I hope it. Uh... Okay, bishop to d7. Okay, this is a legal move. Okay, so after bishop to d7, now this is a big mistake. Of course, after a couple of legal moves, I, it's clearly starting to lose the thread of the game. Now, this is a mistake, so I can play e5. And now I really start to take space in the center here. So this is really, really bad. So I'm going to play 17 e5. And I will play e5, attacking the knight on f6. Of course, when the knight moves, I have knight d5. Knight e8 might be the only move here that doesn't lose on the spot. But I'm getting a lot of space in the center of the board here. So let's see what chat GPT is going to play in this position. Uh, now it says castles. Now, of course, this is an illegal move. Uh, this uh, is an illegal move. 17 dot 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 castles is an illegal move because you have moved your king already. So it's, it's giving the board state again, but clearly it's starting to lose the thread. Um, 16 moves it played without making any real mistakes. So that, that is a good sign. Um, let's see if, if it will correct itself. Now it should move the knight, of course. It should play like knight to e8 here. Then there's knight to d5, but it looks like... Um, I, I hope that... Okay, it plays knight e8. Good. Okay, so it plays a legal move. So now I'm going to play 18... I think I'm going to go bishop to f3 here, try to increase scope of the bishop. Knight d5 is also a move here. Um, I don't even know if bishop f3 is right, but it looks like a pretty decent move just to attack the pawn. So I'm going to play bishop to f3 in this position. So I will play 18, bishop to f3. And it should probably play c6 or bishop to c6 here. Both moves are playable. Rook b8 also is a, is a move as well. Hopefully we don't get an illegal move. Um, but let's let's see. With your move, 18 bishop f3, it should say you attack the pawn, developing the bishop to an active square and also eyeing the, the f7 pawn. Now, I'm actually eyeing the b7 pawn, but nonetheless, I'm glad to see chat GPT is saying eyeing the pawn because, again, I have actually used this term in videos recently. It's not necessarily the most proper or correct chess term per se, but it's a term I've been using. So it's great to great to, uh, great to see chat GPT saying that. Now, it responds with knight to d6. Now, this is a huge blunder because now I can play e takes d6. And I'm going to win the knight. And with it, essentially, I'm going to win the game. So let's play e takes d6. Um, and when it takes back, probably I'll go knight d5, knight b6 to trade off more material. But we'll see. Most likely, yeah, takes knight d5, king f8. And what should happen is something like this, where I hit the rook and the bishop, I trade more material. So in this position, I'm going to play e takes d6, waiting for it to go through the whole sequence of moves. It should take back with the pawn. If it moves the king, it could get checkmated very quickly with knight d5. But nonetheless, it's looking very, very good. So, very impressed, however. It's sort of, it's struggling a little bit here as we get into the late middle game. But overall, it seems to be playing significantly better. A lot less illegal moves than before. So, I'm going to play e takes d6. And let's see what it, what it plays here. So, after e takes d6, I assume it's going to play c takes d6. But we will see. Thinking. With your move... E takes d6. You're capturing my knight on d6. Very good. So it does realize that the knight is being captured here. So what will it play? This move does create a pass pawn. Kind of. Let's see what it does. Um, in response, it should take... C takes... Okay, now it seems like it's re... It, it feels like it's, it's re... It's um it's it's re regained sort of the, the position. It's back in its mind. It feels like it's back to playing playing the moves which are correct so it feels like there's this little stutter in the middle with a couple of bad moves and now it's back to seeing the board completely and not playing any illegal moves so i'm gonna go knight to d5 check hitting the king and the uh and the pawn at the same time so 20 knight to d5 i'll wait for it to finish generating now of course at this point as you can tell from the bar this is this is completely winning for white here because i'm up a piece i'm gonna win the pawn trading down and with this extra bishop on the board after we swap the knight for the bishop on d7 it will be very technical. So I'm still waiting for it. Let's see what it does. 
but it does feel like it's regaining the board state. 100% it's regaining the board state now um, versus a couple of moves ago where it had those hiccups on moves 16, 17, and 18, which unfortunately caused the game. Now, that being said, that is actually very reminiscent of practical over-the-board chess, where if you make one or two bad moves, you lose the game. And so for chat GPT, when it kind of lost its mind, the mind that it has for two or three moves in the middle, um, it does end up costing it the game. So I'm going to play knight to d5. And this is a check. I didn't put the check symbol. I don't know if I should or shouldn't. But um, let's see. I'll, I'll go king f8. Okay, league, that, that is a legal move. So I'm going to play knight takes b6. 21, knight takes b6. And now again, I'm going to trade the knight for the bishop. And less pieces on the board, less danger. I simply have an extra bishop on f3. So I'll play knight takes b6. Oh, no, it says too many requests in one hour. Try again later. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, so actually, it's going to be very, very hard to play a complete game of chess against ChatGPT. What a bummer. Oh, that is actually a huge bummer that this happens. That being said, of course, um, I, I feel like I kept... I, I did actually pretty much put in the moves in a very clean kind of way. I didn't have... Other than the time when it made a couple of legal moves... Um, the, the, the moves were, were pretty clean. I tried to keep it as minimal as possible. Unfortunately, um, I guess that there is a limit to the number of inputs that you can have. That being said, we, we did reach a position where it's completely winning. Now, overall, chat GPT did play this game pretty well. In the middle, it started making some illegal moves as we saw around this point. Now, again, by the end of the game, I was simply up a night, uh, where I was completely winning. Um, if, 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 if chat GPT had perhaps not lost his mind super early. I think after moves like bishop e6, bishop e2, king e7, rook d1, white is a little bit better. I can even turn on the lines now. White is a little bit better here after, say, rook d8, where you can trade and start to push the pawns on the king side. But again, with good play, this should be a draw. So I think even if I had this against Stockfish, the top chess program of the day, this still would be a draw of perfect play. It did lose its mind, as we saw um, in this middle here, when, when it played bishop to d7, e5, knight to e8. And then it played knight d6. That being said, overall, it is improving. This is a significant improvement over where chat GPT was just a couple just a couple of weeks ago. I think it was maybe it was a month already, but where chat, chat GPT was, big improvement. So now I'm very optimistic that we will revisit this in the near future. And I think it will be able to play a complete game from start to finish. I don't know if it will necessarily be able to beat me, but it definitely will be able to play a complete game. I feel pretty confident in that based on what I've seen today. So it's a little bit unfortunate the game ends where it does due to the, due to the amount of responses. Um, from chat GPT. But at any rate, I do hope you guys have enjoyed this video um, of me attempting to play a complete game. I think we'll finally get there next time, but each time there is improvement and it will be fascinating to see how much better chat GPT is for the next time that we try to play a game of chess against it. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already, and we'll be back very, very soon with more great content here on YouTube. Have a great one, everybody. Bye.